Hey everybody, this toolkit is for Unit 5, Lesson 1, Investigation 2, for quadratic functions and parabolas. So in this investigation, we looked at our quadratic uh, functions in what we called factored form. And factored form is when a quadratic equation or expression is written uh, with the x-intercepts uh, already put into it. So that way when we look at the function, we can see and quickly identify what the x-intercepts look like, or where they are, I should say. So let's look at an, an example. Uh, so if we have f of x equals k times x minus p times x minus q, this p and q, these are our x-intercepts. So those are the values where it crosses the x-axis. The k is a constant. So every parabola has, a, has a, its own constant. Um, and its own value of k. A lot of times it's 1, sometimes it's something else. Um, but that's going to that's, that's gonna kind of be unique for each individual parabola that we look at. Um, sometimes we also call this a coefficient, though, as well. So either you call it a constant coefficient, doesn't matter either way. And then the last piece is this f of x. We always have to remember that this thing represents our y value. So if we're looking at a, a coordinate, uh, the y value of that coordinate would be what we put in for this whole f of x. So let's go back to the k. So the k tells us, as I mentioned, uh, how wide or narrow the parabola will be. Each, each function that we come up with, each, each quadratic function, um, can be an infinite number of parabolas that goes through the x, those same two x-intercepts. But that k is going to identify if it's a tall and skinny um, parabola or if it's a short and fat one, a short and wide one. So that K is really important to find and de to determine uh, when you're looking at quadratic functions. Another thing that the K tells us is if K is greater than zero, meaning that it's a positive number, then the parabola will open upwards, which means it's going to be like a smiley face, kind of opening upwards that way. And if k is less than 0, which is a negative number, then it's going to open down. And it's going to have kind of a frowny face. So I always think positive people smile, negative people frown. Uh, so there's your, your positive and negative and open up and down. Um, but let's look and kind of see some of the relationships of parabolas as well. So let's say we've got this parabola here. Um, we've got our x-intercepts. And these are going to be points P0 and Q0. Now notice that in the equation uh, that we wrote above, the function notation above, the, it says X minus P. But actually our P is a positive value. And X minus Q and our Q is a positive value. So if this were on the negative side of the X axis, then we would have X plus P. So just something to kind of keep in mind there with this as, you're, as you start plotting these things out. The other thing that we can tell from this uh, parabola is that since it's opening upwards, k has got to be greater than 0. Um, another thing is always right in the middle of your two x-intercepts, we have this kind of line of symmetry where the whole parabola could fold over on itself. And this, this line of symmetry is the, um, it's also the, the place where the minimum or maximum value of your quadratic function is. So to find that minimum or maximum value, what we do is we find the average of our x-intercepts. So p plus q divided by 2, that would tell us what the x value is of this minimum point. And then to find the y value for this, we take whatever this x value is that we found here up above, and we're going to put that into the function. And we just solve for that to find out what y is. Um, and then the last thing that we can find is the y-intercept. So that's when x is 0. x is always 0 for the y-intercept. And if we put 0 into the function, if we have f of 0, that will give us the y-value for that intercept. So that's kind of the other way that we write when we plug an x-value into the function. So f of 0 means that 0 is our x-value, and we're going to calculate the whole function with zero for our x's to find out what our y is. Um, but basically that's that's the fancy way to write what our y-intercept is. And we could write that for any point. We could write that for the minimum point if we wanted as well. All right, so let's look at another example of a parabola. So maybe we've got a downward-facing parabola. 
Um, we Now in this case, we've got a negative P0 because our, our x-intercept is on the negative side. And we have our positive Q0 for our other x-intercept. We know that it's opening downwards, so k has got to be less than 0. And we still, uh, so if we just take this already as it is, we would have negative k times x plus p, because we've got a negative p minus p. So, right, so if we look at the original equation up in the black, it always starts as a negative, so it would be x minus a negative p, which is a plus p, um, and x minus q. Um, so we could still find right in the middle of our equation, or right in the middle of our x-intercepts, I should say, we have our minimum or maximum. Since k is less than 0, that means it's opening down, so we're going to have a maximum point there. And we can always find the maximum by finding the average of the two, po two x-intercepts, just like we did before, and then the y value is plugging that value into, plugging the, the x value into the function. So that's, again, that's kind of the way that you note that. This is saying that we're plugging whatever value we have for x here, and we're putting it into our function. And that's how we find the y value. Um, okay, so, uh, and then we can't forget about our y-intercept as well, that we have uh, when x is 0, and then we have f of 0 for whatever that value is for y. Okay, so one more quadratic uh, quick example, and that's one that looks like this. Now, in this case... Uh, we know that k is greater than 0 still because it's, it's opening upwards. But the unique thing about this is we only have one x-intercept right on the x-axis. So this is both our x-intercept, p0, and it's also our minimum point. So we have only one x-intercept, and so if we wrote this as a function, we would have to do k times x minus p, and we would just square it because that squared piece that's what makes the curve of the parabola. But since we only have one place where it crosses the x-axis, we only have one set of parentheses. Now we could write this x minus p times x minus p, but you know, it's sometimes easier to just write it x minus p squared. All right, so let's look at an example. We're gonna write an equation and graph the quadratic function with x-intercepts of three and negative five and that passes through the point 1, 12. All right, so let's start with the easy part. Let's plug in our x-intercepts. So we're going to have f of x equals k times x minus 3 times x plus 5. So that's just dropping those right into the formula like we normally do. Now, uh, and again, because we've got a negative 5, it becomes a positive in our factored form. Uh, now we're going to use this 1, 12, and we're going to plug that into our function. So we're going to say f of 1, so that, so that means we're putting the 1 in for all of our x's. We're going to say k times 1 minus 3 times 1 plus 5 equals, well, it equals whatever our y value is. And that y value is 12, so this thing is going to equal 12. So just remember that that is what our y is. So k times 1 minus 3 times 1 plus 5 equals 12. So this will help us find out what k is now. So k is ti uh, times negative 2 times 6 equals 12. Simplify a little further, negative 12k equals 12. So k equals, after we divide by negative 12, negative 1. So now we can rewrite our equation with our k value plugged into it f of x equals negative 1 times x minus 3 times x plus 5. Okay, so that's the specific function for these two intercepts passing through that point. So it's making it so that it's going to open downwards because we've got a negative k, and we'll see how wide or skinny this is uh, based on that, uh, these x-intercepts and that k value being a negative 1. Now we don't quite have enough information to plot our graph yet, so what we're going to do is we're going to find our y-intercept next. And remember, our y-intercept is when we plug 0 in for x. So we've got negative 1 times 0 minus 3 times 0 plus 5. So f of 0 equals negative 1 times negative 3 times 5. So we get f of 0 equaling 15. So our intercept, our y-intercept, is 0, 15. x was our 0, 15 is the y value that we calculated when we plug 0 into the function. Okay, so one more point 
the last point we're going to find is our maximum point. And we know it's a maximum because the k is negative, so that means if it opens down, that it's going to have a, the top point be uh, the maximum point. So what we're going to do is first we'll find where the x value is by finding the average of our x-intercepts, 3 plus negative 5 divided by 2. So we get negative 2 over 2, so x, the x value is going to be negative 1. Now we're going to take that negative 1 and plug it into our function. So we take y equals negative 1. Now this negative 1 is our k, and now we've got to take this negative 1, and we, this negative 1 here, and we've got to plug that into our function for x. So we'll have negative 1 minus 3 times negative 1 plus 5. So our y value will be negative 1 times negative 4 times 4, or positive 16. So our maximum point, negative 1, 16. Now we can start graphing this. We'll plot some values on here. So we can just start plugging in points. And you always need at least three points to get a good parabola. If you can get more, that's great. So we have our two x-intercepts at 3 and negative 5. We have our y-intercept at 0, 15. And we have our maximum point at negative 1, 16. So if we do our best to kind of sketch this graph, we'll have a parabola that looks roughly like that. So hopefully this helped find, uh, helped you identify how to set up an equation, how to find your value for k, how to graph it real quick. Um, and yeah, we'll talk to you with the next toolkit.